So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Coke bottle tech. If you haven't read the EGA resource that outlines this technique, I recommend you check it out. It's basically a way of using plastic bottles for seed germination and the early stages of a plant's life. If you've heard of takeaway tech, Coke bottle tech is just like that, but better. Of course, people have used plastic bottles to grow plants in various ways for ages, but the Coke bottle tech, as described in the resource, is a design of Halcyon. I met Halcyon through the SAB forum when I moved to the middle of nowhere for a little while. We spent heaps of time potting cactus, cutting cactus, breeding cactus, and visiting cactus. We've literally spent days doing nothing but cut heaps of bottles, both to use as terrariums and just to use as regular pots. Bottles can make a cheap, available, recyclable alternative to garden pots. Bottles were a weirdly frequent conversation topic for Halcyon and I. Halcyon also introduced me to the Damascus Gardens and their carer St Paul, which featured in the San Pedro Australiana video Entheo TV published earlier this year. I'm going to sow some seed I collected from there in a sec as I take you through the Coke bottle technique. Anyway, Halcyon has an ability to propagate, breed, and identify plants like very few people I've ever met. Has named a variety of cool plants and creatures and is just an all-round amazing, compassionate plant science human. So thanks Halcyon for putting the work into coming up with this bottle tech design and for sharing it with the community. We're all eager to see what additional modifications people come up with now the idea is out there. To get some more insight from the master himself, I emailed Halcyon a list of questions about the Coke bottle tech. Where did the bottle tech come from? How long have you been using this technique? What parts of the technique do you encourage people to experiment with? Have you had any failed experiments with the Coke bottle tech or found any plants that aren't suited to it? What fertilizers do you like to use with this technique? Halcyon replied, it took me a couple of years of experimenting to arrive at my standard model and I've experimented their performance for about two years now. The Coke bottle tech came from wanting to improve the takeaway tech. I had some that had worked well, some that had done poorly and some that had failed outright. I wanted to have a much deeper soil layer, as well as much more space above the soil layer. I also knew I wanted to incorporate the hole in the side water reservoir that I'd already devised with much success for glass terrariums. I experimented with many different plastic bottles and containers until I started sliding Coke bottles into Pepsi bottles. After a while, I found the base of the Coke bottle slid out when I'd pick it up from the top. One experiment, when I paired two Coke bottles together, completely overcame that problem, so I stuck with that design and have only ever modified the reservoir depth since then. I've now seen that the concept will work with just about any bottle that has a groove in the wall. The groove is essential for making two opposing flanges lock together when the bottle is turned upside down. But my favourite bottle, for many reasons, is a 2 litre Coke bottle, so I recommend starting with them. People should experiment with whatever they can possibly conceive of, and all those things will become apparent when you start making the bottles. I do find the more care or effort you put in, the more you'll get out, so avoid shortcuts. My failures have only ever come from overheating in direct sun, so they must be used under shade cloth. Also, I once found a bottle that was completely full of water, as I'd forgotten to poke holes in that particular bottle. Every plant I've tried so far has worked. I fertilise with slow-release Osmocote or liquid fertilisers like Powerfeed and Sea Sol. I do recommend experimenting with soil mixes and I've noticed if the underwater reservoir layer is gravel, cacti roots can only just tap into it. But if it's organic, the cacti roots go right through it and they get tangled up a bit. So both options have their pros and cons. However, I do like always adding some activated charcoal to that subaquatic layer to protect against nasty anaerobic conditions. So I've had a few failures so far in trying to cut these bottles to make a video about how to actually do it. Uh, well, I failed once, technically. I failed here. Not only did I fail being able to make this flange interlock so the lid doesn't come out like it just did, um, 
when I was trying to demonstrate how you can also just press it down, even though it's not convenient because it pushes on the medium, uh, I, as you can see, crush the bottle um, and undermine some of the structural integrity. So that was that was the official failure. And the unofficial failure was I did the, pretty much the exact same thing without the glory of um, crushing the bottle uh, when I made this one um, for the actual resource document. I'm going to try a third time. Uh, here's hoping I don't fail again. Uh, we will begin. So first I'm going to put kind of at the peak of each of these uh, kind of lumps. I'm going to put a hole going all the way around the outside, the, the reservoir holes. Sweet. And then I'm going to put one here at the top. And that is what I'm going to use to allow my scissors to enter. And then the main tip for this is uh, cutting on the bottom side and that way it's kind of easy to see where you're cutting and to keep a straight line o on the top kind of gets a bit mangly so oh, and, and of course um, so you don't do what I've done in those other failed times I'm going to cut it more high than I need to so I can trim it down later in the hopes of reducing the chance of messing this up cool so uh, that's much too high but that's good now we can cut it down right And I think I'm just aiming, oh, I don't even want to tell you how many millimetres or centimetres because it will change depending on the bottle. But you just want enough overhang after the flange so something will lock in there, but not so much that something won't fit. We'll see, we'll see in a moment how, how that goes. So, uh, and this is going to be the, the top of the terrarium. Obviously, this is going to be the bottom of the terrarium. And this one, we don't need any holes except for one hole to get in there with our scissors. And we're going to cut that same concept just above the flange, hopefully enough to lock in. And better to overcut than undercut. And so we'll overcut this one and show you how it doesn't quite fit in, I'm imagining, because it's probably too big. Let's try. Oh, oh huh. hey, there you go. It wasn't even too big. I nailed it. I don't want to act surprised, um, but unfortunately this was a one in three. Um, but as you can see, you can pick this up really well from the top, super sturdy. You can have a bunch of weight in here and it's not going to crumble. And I guess that is a lesson both to you and myself that overcut, not undercut. Um, I thought I would have to trim that and I didn't even need to. Um, I'm a little bit shocked. Well, not shocked. I do this all the time. This is great. Okay, next step. We're going to get some kind of wood chips or um, wood-based compost or wood debris of some sort. Uh, I, I got this stuff by, this is what was sieved at the bottom of really cheap potting mix. So we're going to chuck that in there. And we're going to get this to just above those holes we put in. Yeah? Cool. Looks about right. We're going to chuck some of our uh, soil on top. This is... Well, in general, uh, for, for cacti, I do about a 50-50 um, composted material or organic material to drainage material of some sort. Um, and this is a friend got it's 50-50 washed sand um, with, with oh, I don't know, whatever the gardening place had. Uh, sand isn't the best. It is good drainage, but doesn't have heaps of nutrients. But anyway, does a job. So I'm going to chuck this in here. pretty good. And then I'll put on some seed. Normally I'd put on a layer of like zeolite or wash sand over the top, but I don't have any of that. And this is some of that Damascus seed I talked about. As you can see, I have um, freaking heaps. This is that Damascus OP. Look at that. Damn. It smells kind of like incense. 
but not always. I have some that have like totally um, smelled gross. Oh yeah, I'm getting carried away. I'm getting carried away. First, first I shall wet this. Uh, it's nice to get the soil damp before I um. Now I got to mess it. What am I going to do? I'm going to do it on this on this table and hope I don't make a terrible mess. But Okay, so uh, the beauty of the medium of video is I guess we can just edit out the part where I get annoyed and I put too much water in it. But that is uh, the beauty of this design is unlike the takeaway tech where you have to be quite specific with how much water you put in it because it doesn't drain, this will just drain itself. Um, I just didn't want to uh, sit here for five minutes while I waited to, to drain when I'm doing a video. But as you can see, I've cut this correctly and out of excitement, I'll show you again. Wait for it. Ah, oh, see, this is sometimes a problem where uh, it doesn't lock in because it has kind of a bend, but it, we know it will come because we've got it. Oh, yeah. And there we go. There we go. All right. All right. Just a bit excited with how well that locks in. And then, oh, I've wet my seeds. But these are those Damascus seeds. And I am going to put what I am roughly estimating as well, I probably should put 50 in there, but as you can see, I've got too many. So I'm going to do like 100 or so. And I often would put um, a layer of zeolite or sand at the top there, but I don't have any zeolite or sand. So I'm not going to do that. Oh, and the other thing I am going to do as well as just pop that lid on again for the satisfaction of the flange. Because this is all done in here now, by the way. This can just grow. But I'm also going to write a label on here. Because that's what you do. So you don't forget. Because people don't like that, you know. So here is some Tracker Series OP from Damascus in a Coke bottle tech. Successfully cut. And I'm not surprised at all, and you can do it too when it's cheap and easy and awesome. Um, cactus. So I'm going to show you what my setup has been for raising seedlings. I used a Coke bottle tech, as you can see, picked up by the lid very easily when it's cut right. Uh, and this is in a, a box and I've, I've cut a bit out of the lid and I've put a fluorescent T5 light on, on the top of it and spray painted the inside of the box white to in increase uh, reflection. Uh, and here are some of my Coke bottle techs, and, and they're not all perfect, you'll see this one, the lid hasn't been done right, so if I pick it up on the lid, it's going to come right off, and that's, that's in no way ideal. But this one, not a problem, and I have to use the right technique to get it off, which you can see, this is probably a little bit overgrown. there. 